All right, look, my lighting system is messed up. Lights went out, things are weird. So we're gonna make do with this makeshift lighting as best as we can. Begin of the year, new lighting, new camera, everything's gonna be happening. What is going on YouTube? Savage here. In today's video, we'll be breaking down and analyzing a random duo gameplay. Now I am a firm believer of learning from mistakes. Unfortunately, when we die, it's hard for us to learn from our own mistakes because we're usually bitching and griping about dying, right? But before we get into the video, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, join the Wolf Pack today. Also leave a like on the video. Let's get this video to 1400 likes. I'm asking for a lot, I know. And as always, if you guys are looking for teammates to play with, make sure you join our Discord community using the link in the description and utilize the Looking for Groups pages to your advantage so you guys can find some teammates, make some friends, and get some Ws with those guys. This gives us an opportunity to sit back, relax, stress-free, keeping our head clear, and watch somebody else and analyze what they're doing and talk about the mistakes that are being made. And then maybe you guys, as the viewers, can sit here and look and be like, damn, I do that stupid shit too. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the gameplay. All right, but here we are spectating Para and he has got a scavenger objective that he has activated. I'm guessing to go ahead and get enough money, get his teammate back and or get his loadout. Now he is only $500 away. Never mind, there goes that. So I don't mind the fact that he wasn't going straight for the scavenger objective. If there's money near you, go ahead and get it. If you're close to getting your teammate back, buy him back and then you guys can do the scavenger together. What I mean by that is when your teammate does get bought back, hopefully you do without dying first. When he does come back, he can land right on the scavenger. We can go ahead and make our way to him and then relink up. And by the time we get to our teammate, he could already be close to being done with the scavenger objectives. So that's definitely a technique I'd rather you guys utilize. Um, the last thing you really want to do is land on your teammate right here because we are out of position. Um, we are in an area where you don't really want to be using basic weapons, especially when it's kind of uh, cl get close to mid game um, and the scavenger objectives are so damn far away. All right, but let's see what the teammate does. Again, I highly recommend that he goes ahead and lands on it. That's exactly what it looks like he's going to do. That's exactly what it looks like he's going to do. And then he's going to jump and then we're going to jump in the vehicle and drive to our teammate. Now, I always recommend that you guys try to avoid hospital and other key points of the map, mostly because fighting in these areas can be a little toxic and time consuming. But if you have an objective that there, I don't want you to go on top of the roof. I don't want you guys to avoid the area completely, right? If you guys have the opportunity to get an objective done at the hospital or the places I recommend not going, you definitely want to go ahead and do that. But if you guys don't really have anything over there, then of course you want to avoid this spot because fighting here is a bitch because most people can't. All right, so we have a helicopter on the roof. We have a team on top of green roof as well. I don't know if this is part of the same team or not, but we know we have multiple teams here. I don't know what the hell Salisbury was doing. There's the door opening. There's his teammate. So I don't mind them opening the door and I definitely like the concussion attempt for sure. But the last thing you want to do is throw a concussion and just stand in the doorway. Remember, even concuss, we can still shoot our gun. And if we're looking at the door you just opened and you're standing there, you're not going to need to be able to have good movement and stuff to outshoot the enemy. In this situation, when you are the enemy, instead of just standing right there, throwing a concussion and just continuing to stand there, open the door, step on the side and then bounce the concussion off the door, off the wall, off of something and let it come in here. If you would have done that, he could have lean peaked us and got the shots off and downed us. He almost won that fight. And if you would have utilized a little bit more uh, strategy in that fight, he could have got the kill and then maybe even got a double kill because look at our teammates sitting in the corner. All right, but I still think there's more people here for sure, right? We got a lot of teams that may be the guys that were on the green roof. It most likely was because that's the direction that they came from. Um, but the helicopter being on the rooftop of hospital is still a little scary. All right, and remember our first objective is to go ahead and get our loadout back. Sitting here trying to find which weapons you want to use. This is too time consuming. Look at it, pick it up. You don't have to sit there and pray to it. Just grab the weapon and go. Um, don't spend too much time trying to figure out what kind of ground basic bitch weapons you're going to use because again, the objective is to get our shit. There's no reason to be checking this thing again, especially when there's a team obviously about to push us. What are we doing? Why, if you wanted it, why did you drop it? All right, so now here we are doing what we expect enemies to do, right? We expect when we're pushing a team we expect them to close the doors and sit there. Now, what I would do if I was the enemy is just shoot these bouncing Bettys, get them out the way. Then I would be hop the hell in here and take this guy out and be hopping in this position would be great because we're so tunnel vision on this door and we're ADS. If we be hop in here relatively quickly, he's not gonna be able to track us and we can easily shit out his throat that or he could come in this way and then his teammate comes in another way and essentially shoots us in the back. Now, I don't know what orange is doing, but he's got a better idea. I definitely recommend this team get to the rooftop. If you guys aren't efficient at close range fighting. If you guys are too afraid to, to fight an enemy team, which I'm assuming they are. Um, you wanna get the high ground. You wanna get the high grounds and then shoot down on the enemy and or wait for him to come up the staircase and then blaze them down on the staircase. 
And like I said, the enemy's team will probably split up and they'll tr probably try to pinch you. And it looks like that's exactly what happened. One guy came in the door we were watching. The other one came in the back door. Um, and here we are sitting in a corner. This is what I'm trying to get you guys to stop doing. And look, look, we joke about people doing this and I'm not trying to be mean. Every person that's playing shooter games has done this before, right? Your professional players, when they first picked up the controller or the mouse and keyboard and they started playing, guess what? They did this shit too. So did I, so did you, we all did it. Camping is just the fear setting in of you not wanting to die in a video game and that's fine. But I'm trying to get here to tell you guys, get out of this habit, get out of this habit. Once you just break out of that little fear shell, you guys will improve drastically at a rate you never thought possible. Get out here and fight. This is a position now where he could have 1v1 that guy in the doorway and then come around here and then it would be a 1v1. But what we've done is we've avoided a fight and now we've put ourselves in a corner into a 1v2 situation. Remember, if you're too afraid to 1v1 an enemy, which he is because he just ran from that fight, what do you think is gonna happen in a 1v2? It's not gonna be good. His ADS sensitivity too, again, again, I really wanna start stressing you guys to fix your ADS sensitivity and you can see it here. You can tell that his ADS sensitivity is a standard one. I want you guys to look when he aims at the target and he tries to track him, how far his crosshair goes one way. And then when he tries to correct it, he overcorrects and it goes another way. If he was to turn down his sensitivity by half minimum, it wouldn't overshoot the target as much. It would be a lot smoother and a lot easier to transition. We, we shot a whole magazine and hit him three times. Somehow broke his armor. But again, changing your ADS sensitivity will drastically increase your, your gunfighting skill. Almost literally instantly. I'm not even kidding. All right, but that squad is dead, unfortunately. Here we are spectating Diamond and his boy Isaac, and they are hopefully going to take over the map. Hopefully we see some aggressive gameplay, but we will see. All right, here we are. We've got a bounty activated downtown. We just grabbed our second loadout, which is the free one. So we are so we have ghosts and everything that we need. Now we notice that there's a team, which is the bounty, on the rooftop right now. And of course, even if we didn't have a bounty, you want to keep an eye on vehicles being parked where they're not supposed to be, whether it's a helicopter, truck, and things like that. Always be reading your mini map and try to remember where vehicles spawn and where they're not supposed to be at. Because again, even if they didn't have a bounty, we could easily tell there's a team up here camping on the roof because of the helicopter being parked up here. But what do you do in this situation? You jump out on these fools and shit down their throat. Oh, God. Oh, well, there you go. Now it's a 1v1. They did shoot our teammate out of the helicopter. Not really surprised there, but we were able to splat the shit out of them. Then we were able to slide cancel under the helicopter tail, B hop, and then kill the enemy. Um, great use of movement in that fight right there. Really nothing that special. It was just a basic 1v1. Um, I kind of wish the helicopter tail would actually kill you if you went near it, like it did in Black Ops. But I love the fact that this team is being aggressive as hell. We just got a bounty kill, and here we are with the money. He's instantly going to the buy station to buy his teammate back, picking up a bounty, and then I'm assuming they're going to be hunting down the next bounty. He may go to the rooftop and help his teammate get his shit back, or he may go by himself. We shall see. And then he also spent his money buying another loadout. You might be like, why did he just waste money buying a third loadout? Well, the main reason is so that his teammate can get his ghost class for sure because these guys look like they're gonna be chasing down bounties. They don't want the enemies knowing they're coming and it's not a bad play, honestly. All right, in a position like this, I don't feel comfortable with him using a sniper in close range combat. If you guys are super goaded with it, by all means, do what you want. Um, but that was close enough to get SMG kills, especially in a 1v2. I'd feel more comfor comfortable with the enemy um, rocking his secondary. I'm not, really, I'm not really feeling this at all because all you're gonna do is put yourself in a position um, to get shit on. He ended up transitioning to that gun anyway. But I also want you guys to notice how he keeps his body moving when he shoots. He doesn't just sit there and try to challenge the enemy. He's always moving. He's always jumping. He's always trying to do something to keep his head moving so that he's not an easy headshot and it's harder for the enemy to track them. Because again, most players in this game don't know about ADS sensitivity. Most players in this game just start it up with everything how it is and they try to play with that. But again, that's not the way to do it. If you guys really want to excel, you need to change your settings. Um, and unfortunately, not everybody knows that. In fact, a very few percentage of players do know that. We got another bounty we're about to go grab. So this is definitely gonna be a bounty hunting game. And not to mention, because we're getting kills, we're getting more money faster. And guess what that means? We get more UAVs in the air. And this is another reason why I want you guys to get out there and fight because you can get money faster than you can looting compounds. When it comes to middle or end game, you don't really wanna loot. You looting phase is over. It's time to fight at that point. The first five, maybe 10 minutes, if you're really pushing it, that's looting phase. Anything after that, that you need to get that out of your head and start going for kills. Here we have an advanced UAV and of course, um, going to the closest target sitting in police station. This should be easy kills. When people are camping in police station, it's usually one way in, one way out. All right, but here we are pushing the guys inside of police station and this should be relatively easy as long as we don't try to snipe them, right? We might be able to snipe them. 
this guy seems pretty competent, but I definitely would feel a little bit more confident with the SMG in this kind of fight. Here we are waiting for... I think we're just... I don't know what we're doing. He's playing patient, trying to see where the enemies are going, but they're not moving at all. They're just sitting still. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Yo, he's just literally just sitting there. Hard scoped. Oh, 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 they're separating now. Jump down there and get the easy kill. Boom, shoot him in the back. And there's his friend. Hell yeah, with the riot shield. Weird, weird. All right, but there's a team in front of us that are probably going to push us because they heard the gunfight. Now, both of them are going to be coming in the building. So what you want to do is jump out the window right about now and rotate behind them. What you don't want to do is this. Because what we're doing right now is we're putting ourselves in a position to get pushed by two people at the exact same time. And again, no matter how good you are, time to kill in this game is so fast that if they both hit their shots, no matter how good you are, you're going to get killed. Um, so I don't like this. I would rather out-rotate the enemy. We were able to get the quick scope and the down, be hopping. But again, I like the movement. I like the aggression. But at the end of the day, we really weren't... Are we going to self-res? Oh my God, shut your mouth. I'm so surprised they didn't execute us. Oh my God. It ended up working out. I'm very surprised that they didn't go for the execution. Very surprised. And that's a mistake on the enemy. 100% mistake on the enemy right there. Now, if they would have known that there were two enemies here, then yeah, I could understand not going for the execution. But the fact that they only got shot by us and then no one else was shooting, I would have ran in that corner and finished this off for sure. For sure. Now, during the gunfight, I did like his movement. I love the I love the aggression, but again, I would have rather him jump out the window and rotate under the enemy and come up behind them and get easy claps shooting him in the back. Because again, people aren't going to really expect that for the most part. Higher tier lobbies, they'll be ready for it. But 90% of the lobbies like this, they're not going to be ready for it. And I kind of have a feeling that these guys are reverse boosting. I'm going to be 100% honest. Because the enemies we're killing, they ain't on the same skill level, fam. All right, but here we are challenging a 1v2 while we're getting shot at from the team pushing from stadium. We got the kill. We need to go ahead and play it up. Looting really isn't that important right now. We have the plates we need. I'd fully get plated before I push back out here. But for some reason, the team's just kind of frozen and they're not moving. So never mind. All right, great knock, great down. All right, but right now we're kind of just wandering around downtown. We do have a bounty that's relatively near us that we need to get to. Um, it's on top of the building. I'm not sure exactly how he's planning on getting to it. Definitely want to either go to the skyscraper and jump off or maybe go to a different one. Um, unfortunately, our teammate goes down. He's got a self-res, but yeah, I don't think he's going to be able to pop it in time. I um, mean, here we are going back to our teammate. Now, again, um, no matter how good you are, I definitely recommend y'all stay somewhat together. If you guys are in a kill race or some shit like that, a tournament, then yeah, by all means, spread out. Um, but just for normal gameplay, trying to get improved, there's no reason to separate. Now, here we are trying to kill the team that killed our boy. We have our sniper out. We see the target, hopefully peek and get the easy headshot, which we do. And then going for the execution and unfortunately challenging the hell of an enemy. Again, guys, I'm a sniper. I love sniping in this game. It's one of my favorite things to do. I have the most fun sniping than anything else. It doesn't matter how many kills I get. I just enjoy the art of sniping, unfortunately. If you're being pushed by a guy with an SMG or an AR and he's relatively close and you miss one shot, you're going to get shit on. And he was a pretty good sniper. But unfortunately, um, again, you miss one bullet. That's a costly mistake as a sniper. And you're going to get shit on. In that situation right there, I wouldn't even gone for the execute. I would have tried to read the enemy, see what they were going to do for a second, and then whip out my SMG and shoot him at the moment he pushed me. Um, but unfortunately now, I think that's the end of the team we are spectating. Let's see who we fall to next. All right, here we are spectating a bunch of roof campers. Now, the reason why I know the roof campers is because Homeboy's got one kill with 15 enemies left. And here we are having to jump on a ledge, contest an enemy. There's someone shooting to our left-hand side too. So I don't like the fact we're just staying on the edge. We could get clapped in the face, but for some reason not shooting at us. Again, depending on the lobbies you get in, guys, it's all luck of the draw on what type of enemies you run into. Uh, fortunately for these guys, it's not that hard of a lobby. But our teammates pushing out in a position like this, what do you want to do? Well, right now, now that it's the last circle, you want to go ahead and pre-rotate the next circle and get the best position, which would definitely be one of those buildings. So I would go ahead and rotate now and get it. We do have enough money for UAV, which is also a recommendation or even a cluster strike should you want um, a little bit of extra suppression if you have to move. Um, but definitely go ahead and use your money to buy something. You guys want to work as a team, maybe get your homeboy a self-res, whatever the case may be. But go ahead, go to the buy station, buy your boy something, buy you something, whatever the case is, and then get to this red roof right here. Let me see, this one right here. This red roof or this red roof are going to be your two best bets. Now, if I really had to pick and choose, I'd go to this one right here because it's more in the center of the circle. 
Yes, you'll have to fight multiple teammates, but the chance of the next circle favoring that building is way better than the circle favoring this because this building is on the edge of the next zone. So I would definitely rotate this one first. But again, when it comes to end game, it just depends on the area you're in. If it's a wide open area, some situations dictate don't pre-rotate. You want to play the edge and play the gas. But because this is such a condensed area and it's going to come down to what team's got the best position on the highest ground, endings like this, you want to go ahead and get the rooftop. Downtown, promenade, um, even airport, for, for instance, are endings where you want to kind of slow down your gameplay and get on a roof. But you don't want to go in too late because if this team sits here and waits too long, what's going to happen? Another team's going to grab that roof. And then we're going to have to try to fight an uphill battle to get that. This guy came back from the gulag. They're already, they're already um, getting positioned. Now, why is he looking at him? He's been looking at him for a total of five or six seconds, hasn't shot yet. And he's probably going to shoot his gun right when this guy jumps off or gets in a position where he can't be killed. Um, if we had a sniper, by all means, take the shot. But with this gun here, I don't really feel comfortable with, with him taking the shots on this. Let's we'll see what happens. Yep, nice mount. All right, I like he jumped off the roof, pulled his parachute at the last second. That way he couldn't get beamed out of the air. So he's got two kills. He's a pretty competent player. He's not your top tier player, but I would imagine his KD somewhere around um, a one KD. Um, so he's definitely above the average Call of Duty player. So in a position like this, he should definitely be fighting more people. He should definitely be hunting down people and trying to get kills. He's slide canceling. He knows how to pull his parachute right before he hits the ground instead of floating in like a bot. Um, again, his ADS sensitivity seems on point, so he needs to have more than two kills towards the end of the game. Now, again, I get some games just don't really favor that for you because of the way things are and then luck of the draw, right? But the fact that we were sitting on the rooftop when we first started spectating this team makes me think he's just a habitual camper and he needs to get out of that habit because if he stopped camping on rooftops, he could probably be somewhere around double digit kill game right now, especially for this lobby. All right, so we have guys above us. What do we do in this position? Well, unfortunately, I don't have stuns. I would definitely bounce a stun off of this, get the stun, and then come up. And or I would leave my teammate here to kind of keep distracting the enemy, maybe shooting a couple times, just keeping them occupied while I went down the stairs and moved to the other side and came up the other, the other ladder and then hopefully shot the enemy in the head. That's something I would definitely, definitely do. All right, just like I said earlier, yeah, that sticky grenade ain't going to do shit for you. Um, just like I said earlier, this was the roof that I recommended you get on because the chance of the next circle favoring it is way better. Again, with this building being on the edge of the circle, I just didn't really feel too confident with it. It's not a bad building to hold, but this is definitely your favorite one. And of course, the next circle favors it. Of course, it's all luck of the draw at the end of the day, but still better situation. But now we got to fight these guys. I don't recommend this. Why are you climbing slow? They know you're coming, bro. Holy shit, how did... How did he not kill you, fam? I don't care if he had a pistol or not. He should have won that fight. The moment we peeked up that ledge, he should have been blowing us away. Wow. Wow. Team got lucky. All right. So we know damn well there's a team on that next rooftop for sure. For sure. So we need to start trying to make a rotation out there. We got the pick. Now is the time to go ahead and rotate. We got them both. Good shit, Newman. I wish we were spectating you, brother. Got double headshot. Fucking right, my man. We need to push them. What are we doing? Why are we sitting here? Let's wait for the circle to force us in. That way we get killed from the rooftop campers. We just pissed off. Hell yeah. No, the moment we down both of them, we should start rotating to the next building for sure. Yes, you're going to have to fight other people, but that was that was your best chance. Here we are getting shot by the team. We just pissed off. The gas is coming in. It's going to push us out in about mm, 0.5 seconds. And then, of course, we're going to take some damage from the enemy team and have to change our position. So now we've alerted those guys where we're at. And now we're going to be revealing ourselves to the team over here to the east while Blue's shooting at him. Look at that rooftop still shooting at us. We also have a UAV and, and I would use it right now mostly because we're out of position. I don't want to get shot in the side and not realize there's an enemy there when I had a UAV the whole time. All right, but now is a position where the circle's about to rotate literally in a fraction of a second. So we just hold our position here and figure out where enemies are at. All right, again, the next circle, luck of the draw. I mean, just where the final circle girl goes is completely luck, and it does favor that building again. So now we're going to have to push up that building and somehow outplay this team. The team on the roof will have the benefit for the next circle because no matter where the circle goes, they can just jump off. Um, so you, you want the rooftop, but getting that rooftop is going to be extremely, extremely difficult. We have a team camp in the gas station in front of us again. Stun grenades would be perfect in this situation. Um, this is a third time with this team that we could have utilized stun grenades to actually benefit ourselves. But unfortunately, because they're both rocking heartbeats, they're really not able to. Yeah, 
When your teammate, when your teammate's gone, he got the kill. When your teammate's going in a doorway and he's sidestepping it, try to trying to shoot, don't stand in his way because then he's not going to be able, to, he's not going to be able to leave the doorway. And I think that's why he went down because we were trying to force ourselves in a doorway and not really realizing that Newman was trying to sidestep and use the and use the doorway as cover. Um, he did go down, unfortunately, but we should be able to get the res off. Now it's a two v two position with the team on the rooftop. They know we're here. They hear us fighting. They see the kill feed. They're going to know we're here. And it's going to be very hard for us to push that rooftop without cover. I get you on a plate for sure, but their best bet is to jump out the window to their right and push to the building because right here is a very small gap. So that means there's going to be very small space with no cover. Because they're waiting, they're probably going to go out this left doorway, which will be bad because then they'll have to run out in the open for a good distance in order to get to the rooftop. And the guys on the roof can just have easy beams on you. So again, no matter what happens right now, go out that right window and play the smaller side. That way you guys can push the building. You may get shot, but you won't get blown away. If you come out here again, you're just going to be easy beams. Let's see what happens. Here they are leaving the left-hand door. No bueno. What am I about to say, chat? What am I about to say? Type it in the comment section. Let me know who watches this whole video. Weird, right? Weird. Who would have guessed that? And it just comes with reading the enemies and the gas in the situation. Again, if you're going to be traveling anywhere, try to always travel with the shortest possible distance out in the open. Coming around this wide hand side is just a wide open angle to get shot the hell out of. Going right here. Guess what? You may get shot, but he wouldn't have died that fast. Ain't no way in hell. I mean, now we're just, just delaying the inevitable. There's no way. I don't know why they're not, okay. I don't know why they weren't shooting at us, but they didn't. Nice nade hit. Oh God. Oh God. This is it for your boy, GG's. He's panicking. You can see it set in, bro. Oh no. What do you do? You don't do shit. You're dead. You're dead. And it just comes down to reading the map. They didn't read the map. They didn't look at the buildings. They didn't even look at the mini map, period. Because I think a lot of people would go ahead and, and make the guess that I got to go this way and then play the wall and then go inside and outweigh the enemy. Because if they would have done that, honestly, if they would have played this and just stayed on the edge of the building, guess what would happen? They could then rotate to this next circle. I know you see the location. They could pre-rotate this, beat the enemies. And then when the circle does rotate, these guys are going to be stuck on the corner of the, of the roof. And they're going to have to bail off, at which point we could then blow them away. So if they would have played this circle correctly, they would have won the game 100%. But again, I really want to talk about that in circle right there. If you guys have to cross into the open or go from building to building, always try to take the path of less resistance. And what I mean by that is don't go out in the open, right? Because you're going to have a little bit of resistance when you get shot in the skull, right? So you guys want to make sure you try to keep yourself near cover, bounce from cover to cover to cover. They should have went out that right window. That was a drastic mistake. It cost them the game. And I guarantee you, they would have won that match if they would have gone out the right window. I know it seems very minute, something so simple as of going right or left, but trust me, it literally makes a huge difference, especially in game. And again, you guys are having trouble getting top 10, top five, or even the victory. Make sure you're checking out my weekly in circle rotation videos, because those right there will teach you things like this on how to avoid getting killed out in the open and how to position yourself better and predict the next circle and predict what the enemies are going to do. But I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, again, leave a like, subscribe, and follow me on all the social medias in the description below. You have a good one. And until next time, good luck in Warzone. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, check out one of these bangers right here. And as always, click that beautiful icon right there in the upper hand corner and subscribe. But until next time, you have a good one and keep on improving.